SNL finally decides to go after the Democrats. I never thought I'd see the day. You guys have got to check this out. From you in attempting to dehumanize Donald Trump and not give any oxygen to the extremely popular Republican candidate for president, they've all but banned the celebrity Donald Trump from appearing on late night TV or forever being cast in a comedic or humanizing light on shows like SNL. But a reminder that Donald Trump, well before he ever decided to run for president, was a celebrity, one of the most famous celebrities to walk the earth. Donald Trump is also really, really funny and an enjoyable person, as evidence. <laughs> Never ever do that. You Air can't have a situation like this for any Democrat running for president, right? No, I've never seen anybody ask Joe Biden to take his dentures out on live TV. And it, was, it would be the equivalent. Donald Trump's a really funny and humanizing dude who, like, quite frankly, it's, it's impossible not to like him in moments like this. Now, something amazing has happened on Saturday Night Live, uh, a show that used to have uh, Donald Trump host regularly. Last time Donald Trump hosted Saturday Night Live was nearly 10 years ago. Epic moments like this. And we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. You're a racist. Who the hell is, oh uh, yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. Who is that? Trump's a racist. <laughs> it's Larry David. What are you doing, Larry? I heard if I yelled that, they'd give me $5,000. <laughs> As a businessman, I can fully respect that. That's okay. We have Donald Trump, like, like, okay, so you're yelling, you're yelling at Donald Trump, like one of the, like, arguably worst things you could yell at somebody, right, who's running for president. Donald Trump just absorbs it, owns it, and then they let him in on the joke that all these people are paid protesters, right? This is like a perfect way to actually get around the attack and to neutralize the attack. And so it's really great. They brought Donald Trump and Kamala Harris back last night to Saturday Night Live. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, um, I think, very well done. Saturday Night Live is receiving uh, plaudits for the way that they have reintroduced uh, America's fun aunt, Kamala Harris, is somebody who's not fun or funny and somebody who's extremely cringy. Joe Biden is back, played by the legendary Dana Carvey, and Jim Gaffigan is playing Tim Walls, and it's just freaking perfect. <laughs> okay, here, okay, so. Before we even dive into it, I think the reason that they are willing to attack the Democrats now is because their ratings must have absolutely plummeted. They have completely isolated their audience. All that they are now is a propagandist arm of the federal government. All that it is now is 10 minutes of trying to relay a message surrounding negativity towards Donald Trump with a little sprinkle of humor. It should be the other way around. It should be humor first. And if you want to have a slight anecdote about Donald Trump or Kamala Harris or Joe Biden, do that next. But it just seems in the past decade or so, once Donald Trump entered the political arena, their only goal is, okay, we need at least five Donald Trump jokes in the first three minutes, as opposed to actually looking for funny jokes and then including Trump if it applies. Look at this. <laughs> Folks, I haven't been this excited since I got a... 10% rebate on a leaf blower from Menards. <laughs> what can I say? I got that BDE, Big Dad Energy. <laughs> I see what I did there, <laughs> what? I got it. I didn't want it, but I got it. <laughs> you know, Trump and Vance are weird. All right? And, and they want the government to control what you do in your bedroom and what books you read. You know, in Minnesota, we have a saying, Mind your damn business. We also have another saying in Minnesota, my nuts froze to the park bench. I gotta be honest here, folks. When Kamala Harris called me and asked me to be her vice president, I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is personal for me. I love this country. And as a former teacher, I need the money. <laughs> this suit is from Costco. It's a Kirkland brand. They make great dog food. Thank you, Sam. Oh, thank you. Wow. You 
Yeah. <laughs> they like, really well, really well done. And then they, then they bring out Biden, played by Dana Carvey, this legend. That's right. A lot of people will forget I'm president, including me. But guess what? And by the way, <laughs> I think I, I did a pretty good job. I passed more bills than any president in history. But well, folks, we still got work to do, no joke. I'm being serious right now, come on. And guess what? And by the way, <laughs> The fact of the matter is, the rich don't pay their fair share. <laughs> they gotta pay their fair share. We gotta build back better. The build back the better, the better, the better, the better. Build back the better. Can't, can't believe it's not. He's like, they're finally doing it. They're finally able to make fun of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I mean, for, for, for years, literally, Kamala, like they refused to make fun of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. You'd have to go to Saudi Arabia their version of Saturday Night Live to get skits like this. The most easily mockable administration in American history. You'd have to, you have to, you have to fly halfway around the world to get comedians to actually make fun of them. This is how rigged and how, how cowardly uh, the entertainment profession has become. But they, they finally did it last night. Here's Kamala. Oh, well, well, look who fell out of that coconut tree. <laughs> Well, your fun aunt has returned. The fun has been rebooted. Too fun, too furious. I am so happy to be campaigning in whatever swing state I'm in, which I will just refer to as Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia. Because I am going to protect your Georgia. <laughs> campaign is like the Sabrina Carpenter song, Espresso. <laughs> the lyrics are vague, but the vibe slaps. <laughs> and sure, I like to laugh, I do. <laughs> but let me tell you something, if you start talking nonsense to me, I'm gonna hit you with one of these. <laughs> Now, now, this election is about moving forward. You see, Donald Trump is stuck in the past. But it's like I say to my husband, Doug, when he leaves his phone at the Chili's. <laughs> we are not going back. That is absolutely perfect. No notes. President Trump uh, getting, getting his treatment on SNL. I mean, what do you, what do you expect them to do? Uh, Donald Trump going off on, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. I thought this was funny. I think the entire thing is funny. The entire eating the dogs, eating the cats song uh, moment is very funny. And the trend is very interesting and hilarious. And so I don't mind it at all. I see you trying to leave, but the doors are locked. <laughs> Come on back, we're having fun. We love my rallies, except when someone does a bing bong, bing, 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 <laughs> right at me. You know, that happened because of the rhetoric of the radical left. They say that me blaming the Democrats for inciting violence is the pot calling the kettle black. But frankly, I didn't know the kettle was black until very recently I thought the kettle was Indian. <laughs> but then he decided to turn black. I miss Joe Biden, oh Joe. We miss Joe Biden, folks. What we wouldn't give to have him stand next to me and be old. We had this in the bag, but then they did a switcheroo and they swapped out Biden with Kamala. <laughs> And now everything is chaos. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. They're taking your pets and they're doing freak-offs. They're doing freak-offs with the dogs and they're making the geese watch. It's very sad. It's very sad. They're doing a ditty. At least that's what I'm told by my running mate, J.D. Vance. People are saying he was a bad pick and in many ways he was. J.D., come on up. <laughs> Thank you, President Trump. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, I think it's kind of disrespectful joking about the gunshots at the rally. This has only been a couple weeks. I'll tell you what, if that was the president from 2008 to 2016 who got shot at, I don't think SNL would be having those same jokes. But because it's Donald Trump, it's all right in their minds. No, nah, I think it's kind of messed up. I don't know. Maybe my humor is a bit warped. I didn't find SNL funny based off of these clips. It was all right. I guess taking away the bulletproof glass for J.D. Vance was kind of funny. I will admit that. Aside from that, I'm really not a fan. I'm not going to be watching SNL. Maybe if I see a clip on X or Twitter, I'll watch it. Although I won't be watching, I do hope that they continue making some of these jokes, especially at the left, because the right has been getting attacked for years, especially Donald Trump. Just the entertainment industry as a whole has been so liberal, and almost everything I watch on Netflix or TV, I can see such a clear hidden agenda. But I applaud them making a step in the right direction let's see if they can continue it and yeah let me know your thoughts on this down below are you going to be watching snl from here on out or are you like me and they kind of lost your viewership years ago let me know i'd love to hear your opinion and if you enjoyed make sure to smash that like comment subscribe and i wish you guys nothing but the best till next time